Today we're going to write a small amount of code that will take the shipping method selector on any WooCommerce checkout. Instead of showing it as a set of radio buttons, we'll be able to present it as a set of pill buttons, which are easier to select on mobile devices, or as a drop down list, whichever method we want. So here's what the shipping method selector looks like usually. Standard radio buttons. This is the selection of pill buttons, so just chunkier radio buttons really, with the little uh, the radio selector hidden. And then the final method is this drop down list option, which is great when you've got a lot of shipping methods, which some stores need. To implement this, you're going to need a custom child theme because we're going to need to edit the child themes functions PHP and create our own PHP file. And we need a subfolder in there where we can store some CSS and JavaScript assets. So let's have a look at the child theme. Here's the themes folder in my dev site. And we've got the parent theme which is generate press in my case could be Astra or cadence, whatever you're using 2023. That's just a default fallback WordPress theme. We're not using it, but WordPress likes it to be there. And then we've got the custom child theme in this case, which is WP tutorials dev. So let's open up my code editor, which is in this case, sublime text, drag the child theme folder into there. And we've got style CSS, which just confirms generate press is the parent theme. And then functions PHP, which is where we're going to pull in our custom code from. So we're just going to save that one. So it stays as an open tab. We're going to go back to the tutorial and see what's next. This top section here, this just explains how the logic is going to work for the pill buttons layout and for the drop down list layout. So it's worth having a read of this. The pill buttons layout, it's just a CSS hack. We're going to enqueue our own style sheet. That's going to override how the radio buttons look. And we're not really going to be doing anything with JavaScript at all. And the PHP is virtually minimal. The drop down list, we need to be a bit cleverer because we need to keep the radio buttons in there so that the value of the selected radio button goes through when the order is created and is captured by WooCommerce. But we need to dynamically create and inject a select element which holds a copy of the radio buttons as drop down list options. So if we just scroll down here, it goes straight into the PHP code now. So we're going to put our code, instead of putting it straight into functions PHP, we're going to put it into a file called WPT customize shipping base .php. Let's just copy that text, go down to the editor and we're going to make a new file. I'm going to put a PHP tag in there just for the moment and save that as the file name we've just copied. And we're going to go back to the tutorial, grab this code lump, back to the editor, select all and paste it in there. Now, when we go back to the tutorial, you should see that the next instruction is to grab this one liner or two lines, if you count the comment, and we need to paste that into your child themes functions, PHP. Let's copy that to the clipboard, go down into functions, PHP, which we've got open here, fairly near the top. We're just going to inject that here. And you'll see that all that does is require once the current directory and then it includes our new file name. Save that. So if we go back up here, we'll see we've got a bit of a, bit of a discussion about these two constants, which are at the top of our PHP file. So that's this here and this here. So this is common when you write code, which has one or more functions in it that at the top of the file, you'll put your switches, your control parameters, the things that you might want to change in the future that control how your code works. So if we wanted to change this from pills to drop down for another project, we just have to look near the top of this file to find the constant that controls how it behaves. We don't have to come rooting through all the code and start trying to change it here and change it there and maybe missing one and making a mistake. So control parameters go at the top of a file in constants. Let's implement the pill buttons. This is pretty straightforward. We just need to create a subfolder in our custom child theme where we're going to put the assets. So let's just make that now. We're going to make a make a new folder in here called WPT customize shipping rates like that. And then this first file we're going to put in here is the, is the CSS file for rendering those radio buttons as pills. So we'll copy that back into here, 
make a new file, save it with the name that we've copied, and then we'll go back to the tutorial, copy the actual CSS code itself, select all and paste. You'll see we've got the new file, the CSS file in here in this subfolder. And then if we go back to our PHP file, let's just have a look and see how this works. We'll see that we've got the current mode set to pills. It can be pills, drop down, or anything else, doesn't really matter. We've got it set to pills. And then we've got this action down here. Now, this is what controls a lot of WordPress uh, theme modifications and plugins. So effectively, whenever this, this action is triggered, WP and Q scripts, our function is going to get called. And we we set a couple of variables to find out what directory you're in and what URL, the style, the custom child theme is in. And then we check to see if WooCommerce is installed. So if WooCommerce is installed, there will be a function called WC in capital letters. If WooCommerce is not installed, we don't want to be in queuing our assets or trying to do anything that relies on WooCommerce being installed because that could cause an error. So if WooCommerce is installed, then we know it's safe to call the function is checkout or is cart. If is checkout is false and if is cart is false, then we know that we're not on the checkout page or the cart page. So there's no point in enqueuing our assets. We could enqueue them. It wouldn't do any harm. It would just slow down your site. So we're just going to say, right, if WooCommerce is installed, and we're on the checkout or the cart page, then we need to carry on to the next step. So in this case, the mode is set to pills. So that means we execute this one function here, which just enqueues this one style sheet here. And that's all it does. So let's actually see if that works. We'll come to the drop down in a moment. So let's go to my dev site here. This is a pretty basic, almost empty shop. We'll just see we've got uh, two products here. We'll go to the hoodie. We'll select a variation. We'll add it to the basket. We'll view the basket. And then we'll see we've got this down here. We've got the radio buttons. So that's appearing in here because I've been here before. So I've got, I've got an address lined up. It should also work on the checkout page. There it is on the checkout page. So we can just verify that. If we go back to our code, and we change the mode to something other than pills. So default, and then we reload this page, we get radio button. That's the default WooCommerce behavior. So that's great. We've got pills. That's, that's half the battle. Put that back in there. Make sure it still works. Three days, two to three days. Changing this causes the grand total to change because we've got free shipping, $2.99 shipping and $5.99 shipping. Great. So let's go back to the tutorial and let's go down to the drop down list section. This one's a bit different because we need to create a JavaScript file. So we'll grab the file name like we did for the CSS file. I'm going to here and create the new file. Save, paste the file name in. Confirm that. And we'll go back to the tutorial, grab the code. Select all and paste. Save that. So this is jQuery, uh, most of this. Uh, so feel free to have a read through it. But effectively what we do is we inject a select element, and then we find all the shipping methods, copy and paste the names and the values, and then we create option elements here, and then we stuff those into the select element. That's what that does. And we should be able to check that that's working by going to our PHP file. If we change the mode to drop down, we'll see that when we come through this set of if statements, this is the one that's going to get activated this time because case uh, the mode equals drop down. So we're going to enqueue the CSS file and we're going to enqueue JavaScript file. Now, we haven't made the CSS file yet, so we're going to need to make that next. If we scroll down here a bit further, we should have a CSS file. That's this one here. No, it's not. It's this one here. So let's grab this CSS file. Back down into here, and we'll create that in the subfolder for the assets. 
save it. Grab all that. But you'll see all it really does is hide the radio buttons with a display none. But you could put more in there if you wanted to style the drop down itself or any, any of the labels around there. Now that should do it. So if we could just double check that, we've got the mode set to drop down in our PHP file. We'll go back to the dev store, reload the checkout page, and we've got a drop down list. Now there's one more constant we've got in here at the top of the file, which is this diagnostics constant. So if something's not quite working or you want to modify this code and, you, and you'd like to see what's happening behind the scenes, set that to true. And then go back to the checkout page. You'll see the radio buttons are not hidden. So when we change the selected shipping method using the drop down list, you'll see the radio button gets updated and causes WooCommerce to do the recalculations just as it normally would. Now we're just going to put that back to false. Save that. And that's all there is to it. So a bit of PHP in the back end just to act as an anchor and a place to store our settings. And all that does is enqueue the relevant assets based on whether we want to show pills or a drop down list or any other method you want to add yourself in the future. Thanks for watching.